Listen to Dick. Hear Dick. Sixteen years later, is describing a lot of what happened between 1984 and 1994. He's going to give us details on necklacing that even I, spending six years in Soweto, never came close to understanding. He's going to talk about the white people that he knew. And while listening to Dick, be very aware that he was born in 1972. Today he's only 38 years old. In 1984, he was 12 years old. By 1982, at the age of 10, he was already an activist, one of the leaders in that Everton Sebokeng area, Africa Dick. Age of 10, he was already a leader. It started earlier than that. By 12, he contributed to closing the schools. By 13, he contributed towards necklacing in 1985. And he was still only 19 when the black on black conflict resulted in a massacre of a lot of his peers in 1991. And I said, me when I grew up, a white man was an enemy. And then he was not moving with a private car like this, like now. No, even moving, they must moving six, eight, and then the car must be tight. Because you're gonna put stones on the on, on top of the car. And I said, back when, around. When was that? The army guys? Yeah, there was the army guys. Because there was not another white people who was coming in the location without the, the army guys. And cops, man, cops, they was coming in the night just to, to hit and then they go again. So the army guys played soccer with you? Yeah, and the, the army guys was good guys, Baba. And then they was not hitting someone from Mahala. You understand? They was hitting you when you're making a trouble in the location. And then they starting to catch you and then they kick you. And then they, they arrest you. But Even Dick, if you say that people came chasing after you, shooting with rubber bullets, why were they doing it? What was happening that they were chasing you and shooting you? They tell me they were chasing us because we are fighting to say the white people, they must put Mandela out of prisoner because Mandela was still in Robert Island. And they're busy making promises to say, Mandela is coming, Mandela is coming. And then if you don't fight, we're starting to stop Mandela. They don't even talk about Mandela. When we're starting to put up our service and starting to chase him them again, they're starting to say, okay, 94, they give us a promise to say, 94, really, really, Mandela is coming out. And I show from 1980, we're starting to fight burning houses of my councils, councillors. Why were you burning and the council? Why were you burning the councillors' houses? We are burning the councillors' houses because the white people they give us the councillors' house money. The councillors, we see there we see there's no scone tear, there's no light. Take there's a money to make a scone tear and light, and then they eating money. They open shops to buy good cars and making big houses for themselves. And then we're starting to paint the houses, painting the shops, and then we're starting to call them Mishwembe. And then we call them Amayuka, and then we're starting to paint them. How close did you get to it, and how much did you know about it? Now, me, I was a part of the people of Netlis. Netlis, we started in 1985. Why we started Netlis? There was black people selling another black people. They're going to the white people and telling them, you know, today ANC is planning to do this. 
and then it's two white people they come and shooting at us and then we're starting to say that people are going listening what we're talking and then they're going to give the white people we're starting to give him necklace i burned twice twice was staying that side next side of the street that was was one of our counselors you are a black person eating with white people we're starting to pain you because you're selling us from you taking things from the black, you give them the white. The white, they just come and hit us. That's why I said there is a lot of people, wait, a lot of black people here in Valtrangi. They are dead and they're dying for sweet monati mahal. But, they, but, but, but were all the children involved or only some of them and did other children see it? So I can say people of, from 1970, they were part of them. People of 1980, they were still kids. We we'll just defend them and fighting for them to say they must get nice education and nice living because that time white people they were busy starting to be naughty for our fathers. Hey, what you staying? Why are you looking? Why are you staying in the house? Why you don't go to job? Why are you selling this? Starting to kick the things away. When you black people are selling fat cakes, they're kicking the fat cakes, selling African beer, they're kicking the African beer. People they can't sell them by trying. White people they are busy, they taking our black people, they use them to destroy another blacks. Eddie, my wife and I got involved in Soweto in July 2004 for the first time. Products of the apartheid system. We found love and warmth. But what we were very aware of was the lack of sport and recreation. It took nearly three years for us to understand that sport and recreation disappeared in the mid-1980s. Not too many people could give us a reason for it. We were also aware that schools closed for a few years during the 1980s. Strangely, I never put the two together. Uh, I don't know why, but it was not something I was aware of. No sport, and I was aware of no school. Never put them together. Dick will tell us why sport and school closed in the mid-1980s. Also, for those who followed us for the last six years, you will understand why I say that soccer does not exist in the township. It disappeared through the conflict in 1984-85. We've done nothing to put it back again. And part of our problem is the fact that structures were never put in place pre-1984 on which we could even build. If you listen to Dick, you will find that most of the sports activities organized by the White City Council, sponsored by suppliers, is what life was like in the township pre-1984. Today, we still cannot do anything without prize money sponsorship. Let's listen to Dick. We're going to the school, there is this thing to say, the teachers, they want to say, people, they was not be educated. If you are playing soccer at the school, you don't go forward. You're playing soccer the rest of your life at school. If you're cutting and running at school, you don't go forward at school. You're running the rest of your life at the school. And then we as good students, we're starting that thing to say, pass one, pass all. Face one, fail one, fail all. I call him one because we see, if someone take a part at school, you don't go forward, you stay at school three years, four years, just because the school must get something according to that. And then we're trying to make this, if you fail, you must get a pass. If you pass, you must get a fail. Are you t why, why, and when was this, and why did you start doing that? So we're starting that thing today, a school they call him Jordan in Valtrangi. That school was the school for priesters. But Mara, they bought us the school because we were, there was no schools, a lot of schools in Valtrangi. And then the priesters, they say we can use that school. And then we're starting to be students there. After all, we see when we, we're taking a part of the school, you're a ball player, you run, you're a boxing, you don't go forward because they, you make the school must win, the people they must know the school. And then you, you're staying at the back, 
you don't make stand at nine, you don't make stand at six, you don't make stand at ten, because you are good and that thing. So we're starting to make this pass one, pass all, fail one, fail all, because we see the yeah, the school is starting to make no another thing, another things we don't love, and then we're starting to say chasing teachers, chase burning schools. You understand? Because we see, we don't think, we go to the school, no, no meet, no school today. And other schools, they open the school and then we close the school. No, no school today because we are busy according to Sentis. They bring this light because they're bringing a lot of cops, a lot of soldiers. And then in the night, the soldiers, they can't see us. And then we hit them. You understand? In the morning, they can see us. They, we don't do nothing. But Mara, in the night, it's dark. They come in here, we shoot at them. You can see when they build, where they build them, the bullet come from, of the bullet, the petrol pump, petrol pump come from. We just they run away and then they getting hit. A lot of them they dying, or some of them they getting hit. And then government starting to see, okay, because our people they dying because that place is dark. Let me make Apollo lights for them. They bring the Apollo lights, they bring it inside, and then we shoot the troops with the skid tracker. To say the Apollo light must not be bright, must be dark. Shoot him in the night. The troops are broken. And then it's starting to be dark again. When they come, they think they're gonna get light, they get this old oh, why the place is dark. Man of this light trick. And do we already shoot the, the troops with the ski tracker to say when they come, they must get the place is dark and then it's starting again to shoot at them, to shoot at them. They're running away, going to sleep in the classrooms. They come into the classrooms, they're running after us. They chase us, we're running away, we get them, we shoot just live, 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 dead life. Shoot, run away, come back, come in the house. Hey, mama, where's your kid? No, your kid, my kid is not there. Yeah, where you get this millimil? You take this millimil from the target. This Fokon Mandela's child. They throw the millimil away, the sugar. I come back, my mother crying, think you see? You starting you you starting the cops now. They throw out my millimil. Why can I eat? My, my, my small child. What what? I go out. I must go to Panda. Some another mother. Go out. I come back with money. Mama, here's a hundred rand. Okay, buy that millimil again. I'm going. I don't sleep in the house. When they come here, you must tell me I'm not your kid. I'm not your child. I'm just a relative. So when as a white suburban South African part of the apartheid system, I was very aware of the fact that delivery vehicles were being attacked when they entered the township. The bakery, the grocery, the furniture. To me, it was being attacked by those terrible black people in total. I never understood that it was in fact the youth that were doing it. Dick later identifies these vehicles that were being targeted. I say target, but he actually, actually called them the target. This is how they referred to them, was the target. And I can see now why they call it the target, because automatically I will refer to it as the vehicles that were being targeted. Oh, the people that deliver the, the shops, they make orders. Maybe some pick and page, there's a shop, they call him Tip Top. Roy Boss shop there is Georgie, the best cooker, the owner of the shop. Georgie make an order, maybe one crate of bread, You're looking for some easy meat, bologna, cheese, You're looking for cold drink. When they think they come in, we're sitting at the corner, just we are three or four smoking twice. They think it are just people eating their better shop. After 15 hours, 20 hours, I start 20 of us, 30 of us. Yes, driver, don't drive your car, wait there. Just wait there. People come out, the people of the location, they come out, they take everything in the truck. Okay, driver, take your truck and your boys, go back. And tell your boys to say the Africans take everything in Valtrangi. Didn't they, didn't they at some stage burn trucks that were coming in? No, well, some of, when, if you burn in the trucks, is that truck, if the driver want to run away with the truck. If you cooperate nice with us, 
when we say stop, you stop, you open nice the truck, you know, we'll take everything nice and then you go back with your truck. If you run away, we chase you after and then we take the truck, we pen the truck because you don't want to operate with us. You are a bad person like white people. It's better to say you must pen you, you add the truck. And then what do you do? You run away, you leave the truck. Because you can't pen him for the truck, white people truck. You run away, you leave the truck, and then we're starting to pen the white people's truck.